You don't have to go crazy about um, how to work a sinking stick bait because it's underwater. So what you're really looking for is how reflective it's going to be. And when you work a sinking stick bait, pretty much there's only two ways to do it. It's either a twitch or a swim. A twitch, it's kind of like a walk the dog underwater. So it's going to go like this. But Always, no matter what you do, when you're working on will always remember the pause. That pause is the one that yeah, no, I gets I the fish hit, hitting the wall. So once it, so you're twitching, 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 just stop for that split second and then work it again. That split second is when the fish hit. Always, <coughs> regardless of the sinking or floating. But you guys, you guys need to give it a try on what pace you like it. I personally like Jason. Uh, Jason does the long, I don't do the long. I do completely decided, I do it completely different than a lot of people. I cast ahead of the school, I let it sink, I count to 40, 50, depends on the depths. And I caught dohies, tuna, you name it, all sorts of species on, on that tour. It's one of the best in my opinion. I just jig it, I jig it sideways. That's why I need the long cast. I cast it really, really, you know, far and long cast, I let it sink. And I go with it sideways, non-stop. I don't stop, but I go slow. Like I'm jigging. You know, the same way I'm jigging, no. I take it sideways, and it worked perfectly for me. Some people like, you know, sweep and pause. And the good things about it, the sweep on pause, that I, I've seen it next to Jason. The sweep and pause and the stop, and those two on the water, the way they go, they go like this. First of all, they shine on the way down. Second, if you, if you take this tour and you drop it onto the water and you look at it, and it's the same action as the contact grip, you see it going like that. And honestly, it's like, it's an invitation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you cannot resist. You, you, you will see it. When you, when you see those lures going down like that, it's, it's, yeah, like it's, it's shining. Most of these sinking lures, they descend at a rate of like two to three feet per second. So if you know the depth where the fish is, cast it up count the number of seconds and that's exactly where it's low at. That's where you want your fish down because the low to be with the fish. If you're not getting your hits, you know, try the other person, let the other person try to go deeper a little bit maybe. And yeah. always always spread it out. You know I've seen so many times like guys like I think I'm gonna give you an example, Bogdan. Bogdan fishes oh, me all the time. I cast this way in two seconds, he's on the top of me. It's like, Bogdan, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? It's like, come on, guys, spread it out. This is, this is an example. <laughs> Try to fan cast. Always fan cast. <coughs> spread it out. I mean, it's, it's good to spread it out. You never know because it's not like the boil is right there is happening. If you got a boil, okay, no problem. One guy cast to, this, you know, to the outside because they're heading this way, one to the middle, one towards the tail. You know, you don't want lines crossing each other. You want to spread out as well and cover up. This is uh, a rod, rod tip. Um, I'm going to jump to the rod. The rod tip, I think, for stick bait, you really need a soft tip. But, soft tip. but exactly. you're going to end up gaining something and losing something. 
And there's no win-win situation when it comes into this. And you guys have to understand that and know that and accept it. There's no such a rod nowadays in the market that is suitable for everything. It doesn't exist. Yet. So if you want to catch a big fish and they're taking a the stick bait, you're going to sacrifice things. You're not going to get the perfect rod that fits them. Because you're targeting big fish. You need a backbone. Yeah. And you need a longer rod. And this is going to go to your, it's, it's, it's a disadvantage for you as an angler. Because the longer the rod it is, more parabolic, the more time, the more fight, and more advantage that goes Just to the fish. Just remember one thing, the longer you fight, the higher the chance of losing the fish. Because the hook is going to keep, you know, boring and making the, uh, the wound bigger and bigger. And one, and so one shake is out. Once he does this, it's coming up. Even with the bar, it will come up. It happens a lot, especially when it gets close to the boat, because that's usually after a very long fight. And when they're close to the boat, they get crazy. So that time, you have to be very critical. It might just fly back towards you. So just, just be aware. So when it comes into sinking stick bait, you really need uh, a strong taper or more backbone. You need to move. You, you're targeting fish in deeper water. So a lot, of resistance. You, a lot of current resistance. And when we test rod, we don't test them only here. You know? I mean, we th thankfully, you know, thank God we get the opportunity to go overseas and try different terrain, different water, different environment, everything. So we get, you know, we got to choose what's right for the lure to work it. And, you know, this is when it came in and we started developing the, the Monster Ledge. And in the beginning, the Monster Ledge was only for sinking stick bait because it, it had a completely different yeah, taper than the way it's Yeah, it but, does. But now we switched to, you know, we like the, the rod a lot and the, the carbon fiber material that has been used. And so now we're switching, we're doing two Monster Ledge rods for, uh, for, for stick bait. There is the 250 regular and the 300, those are for big fish, and those are for sinking, uh, uh, sinking stick bait. And we have the 250 ST and the 200, which is going to come out in another uh, uh, two weeks. It should be, it should be out. This is, this is for com strictly stick bait. However, the 200 is strictly stick bait. The 250 ST, you can use proper with it. I used it, no problem. Two models. The 250, one is ST, which is soft tip. Those are really good for working uh, stick baits. And then we have the regular 250, and those will actually work poppers as well. Yeah. The, the, the 200, I was testing it last year in the Cape, and uh, I hooked up to a giant. It was close to 550 pounds. And it was on a 14,000 stella of 60, 60 pounds jerry brown. I fought it for one hour and 45 minutes. I got it to the leader. And we didn't have a kill tag, and you know, we were trying to take the picture, so Eric wrapped up the leader on his hand, and wave came in. This is when he popped up. And I mean, I was really like fascinated how how the rod was able to take, you know, that kind of abuse. But the action, the action on the rod. This is the 200. The, the action on the rod was as a stick base. Um, Bobby used the race point 100 when we were testing it in Oman at that time, and it have a very very nice action. But I tell you, I'm. I'm really blown away with, with the action on those rods, the 200. It does have the backbone. For fish up to 200 pounds, I think it's doable with no problem. And for Jersey, if, if you want to get one outfit right now, I know a lot of people lean toward the, uh, uh, the Maestro. What scares me sometimes is the size of fish, because last year was all, all of a sudden, so so I would I would lean I would lean more not specifically like our rod but I would lean a little bit to be more beefy. And reason for that is you have a successful rate on landing the fish faster, so you're eliminating that stretch of time. Like Paul said, the longer it is, the higher the advantage is going the goes to the fish, it doesn't go to you. And then if you want to do a catch and release, you call the fish, it's going to be much, much quicker with a, with a, with a uh, you know, with, yeah, a, with, a, with, a, with a rod that has a of high, higher chance of survival for the fish, basically. Um, so, is, does anybody have any question concerning rods? So, 
I'm sorry, the stick bait uh, method, the floating or sinking, do you have preference whether it's spinning tackle versus conventional? Uh, no, if, I, if I'm doing, if I'm doing uh, stick bait or, I mean, you gotta go, you, you, you gotta go spinning. Right. Yeah, you have to go spinning, you have no other e Either way, whether it's a sinking? Yes, 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 spinning. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. conventionally, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it only for, jigging. for jigging, jigging, and you know, I know the surf <coughs> guys do a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or the West Coast guys, they, they do use convention, yeah. and some of them have actually asked me if we do have any uh, casting rod for tuna using um, conventional reels, and uh, most of them are all custom built. I'm not gonna say no, it can be done, I've done it before, but it's, it's the action is different. It's old school and they're stuck to it and they don't want to change it and it's going to take a while. It, it, it will know. happen. Yeah, it's just going to, the West Coast, I'm telling you, it's going to change. It's going to take a while though. It's, gonna, it's not going to be like here because their mentality is completely different. You, and this you is, won't get the they've right. done it for so long. You know, we the working the law with the convention. Yeah. Because convention is basically going this way. Where it goes to spinning, you know, it goes spiral. So that way, when you move, you actually doing it in the spiral motion. You don't feel it, but you actually is going in the spiral motion. But for conventional, it's going to be kind of weird because, well, how do you put it? Parallel and perpendicular, basically. Yeah. So you won't get the right action. It's going to feel very weird. A 200 gram rod, you just showed. Uh, you think you can get away with like a 70 gram popper on it? Yes, yes, okay. not a problem. How big of a popper do you need to use on that? This is rated up to 120. So, you I can exceed, you can exceed 10 gram <coughs> with no problem. Yeah. But I wouldn't exceed more. Okay. Yeah. And this is the right balance with a 14K rod. Right. So that's almost perfect for our fishery here. Yes. Most of the time. Yeah. I think, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, based on what I've seen and the, the, the experience that I had was that. Uh, with that, uh, with that rod, this is going to be a big hit. I mean, I caught GT on it on the last trip to, uh, uh, to, to New Caledonia, and that fish was almost 40 kilo. And you know, the intense there is, is you, you got you got the terrain. It's not like here. It's like you hook up the fish, and it's, there. it's like the shark is against you there. Coral. The, the coral is against you. The you know the, the, the rocks, the boat, everything is against you. And I fished with it was completely full drag, didn't break it. But the angle was always right. That's that. This is this is where it most happened to guys. You know when they break rocks, is mm -hmm. the angle. I mean, till now there, I still see people going like this, and I still see there, there is a way to do that. But when the fish yeah, is you away from you, not when the fish is charging under the boat, and this is when it happened. That's an April run, right? Yeah. April, yeah, yeah. It's going to be shipped on the 29th. That might be a perfect balance for us here. Yeah, I think I think this one will be will be perfect for uh, for our fishing over here. Um, but again, you know, you got the Maestro 74XH. If, if people want to use copper, this is a this is a rod for copper for fish. The Maestro series, I know we pulled up big fish on it when we tested and many anglers. I mean, I had I had a guy in Southern Oman in Moscow. He had a 90 kilo yellowfin tuna. It's too hard on the on the on the on the Meister 77H. I'm like, how did you do it? I said, don't do it. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna bash me. Don't do it. This yeah. is not made up for this. Right. You know, the Meister series is made up for a smaller class fish, for 100, yeah. 100 pounds and less. It's not made up for monster. You can play around when the fish are finicky using lighter because you need that softness. You need the lighter line. You need to go down with everything to trigger the bite. If you do this. You gotta take your time with it. Any rod, not to, in, in, just to let you know, any rod in the market, I don't care who's the brand, any rod could break. There's no it such break, it's not a rod. It's, not, it's, <laughs> it's a broomstick. That's what it is. I mean, every rod is, is, is vulnerable to break. It's, they want to, they want you guys to break the rod. If you're not gonna break the rod, they're not gonna buy it. Same like you buy a car, right? It's good for five, six years, seven years. After that, what, you're gonna buy a new car. Yeah, Nothing's for life. And then to myself, we, we kind of know because I feel like we spoil our own market because of all the fish that we pull in and you know it's big and we're using very light tackle. El Maestro getting 90 kilo of fish, race point 200, 300 getting four, 500 kilo of fish. But again, these rods are really not meant for giants. It's 
for you know for, uh, recreational up to say two three hundred pounds. But this is where your experience comes yes. into play. Yeah. You're not you gotta play with the fish. You know, I've seen yeah, guys coming in. It's like, oh, I have the least point three hundred. No, uh, it's no. it's That's it's gonna good. break. It's, it's I mean, the rods are made up. The, the, the good rod, the, you know, we put we put tremendous effort to get it to where it is. Every rod. But it doesn't mean it doesn't break. Wreck. It doesn't mean if I landed the fish three hundred kilo, he can land it. Not because he's I'm better than him or something, but you as well you need to use your brain with it. That's you need to use a little bit of common sense. You know, and you need to have the knowledge when and how. Yeah, That's what makes it so exciting. Yeah. Isn't there a certain argument for, you know, having your drag scale out and kind of sensing the lockdown point on the rod and kind of like knowing well, what your capabilities are? Yeah, I would say, you know, put the drag to what you're capable of. Because there's really no point in, like Sammy said, locking down. I can handle a lot. Stella, say 18,000 is going to put me right into the water. <laughs> I myself will lock it, but not for too long. I cannot, I know when to lock it, when the fish is ready. Yes. When the fish is ready, this is the time that I'm going to pull, and I don't want one inch of line getting out, okay? But I'm getting burned as well. So, so my time is limited, and I, I wouldn't do it in the beginning of the fight. I would do Never. it toward the end. Always when the death circle start and the fish is really big, and we're going for a kill, you know, like I said, say in North Carolina, last year we killed that 92, and not finishing the job on it, because the guys, they were done with it. Okay, that's the only way, clack, clack, clack. And once you and then, that, you know, no choice. You get no choice. Certain time, no choice. As long as you can take it. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> Seriously, I'm saying. When the fish starts to do the death circle, that's the time where you really want to crank it down or lock it down. Why? Because every time you make a crank, you're bringing the fish up, and every time it comes up, there is a tendency more to pressure goes up the to the surface. And once it goes up to the surface, blah, what blah, you blah, really blah, want to blah, do, blah. don't let his head go back down. That's why we lock it. And we want to yank the shit out of him and bring him into the boat as fast as possible. Because as soon as you let the head go down, he's going to start diving. And with that drag lock, you're going to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> also, one thing, I've, I've seen many, many uh, fish lost, not here, and then the cape in North Carolina due to that issue was a lot drag because of the wave as well. So the boat are huge and big, uh, fish are coming up to the surface, angler, and then, and when you move there, you move, like, you know, you move and you go down, your rod moves with you, the line goes down, and all of a sudden, you move that, ma the boat make that move with the wave coming in, and all the pressure is on the line, and pow, it snap right there. So when, when a situation like this happened, you know, and you feel it, you gotta move yourself yeah. as well you know make yourself flex you you won't have with the boat you want to get it down don't keep to loosen it right? don't keep going up like that right it's, this is gonna get stop something gonna, gonna something wrong gonna happen well uh anybody okay wait, wait. I had a quick question when you guys are in north carolina do the captains like when you're in that in, when they're spiraling like that do they bump it bump the uh, throttles a little bit to get they the problem yes the general, general, yes they i do. am and they press their head up yes they learn so fast in right. north carolina they're humble people they're one of the best captains in general i'm talking not specifically they work with each other they're great guys i enjoy the southern hospitality there yeah. It had nothing to do with up nose. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. At least we're in the middle over here. We're good. But it's they, they, they're really good. They know what they're doing. I mean, I know I do that, like, you know, to kick a little prop wash there. The yeah. fish is right there. Just kind of yeah, keep yeah, them they, from knowing which is what's up, what's down. And, 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 you know, the good things about it is for the past eight, nine years, they've been, they've been landing all huge big fish, you know, on, on spinning outfit. They learn so quick. The first trip we went there, they were laughing at us. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. No they were laughing that day. That day we end up seven out of nine. We landed seven fish, seven bluefin tuna out of nine. We landed on the boat. They came into the dock. They just couldn't believe it. And, the Alf, and it started from there. Our first trip, nobody believed that it can be done. And when we did it, blind casting. Yeah, just blind casting. But the guys were trolling. So as soon as they got a fish, they stopped the boat. I cast, I got hit. 
I brought the fish in faster than the trollers. I mean, the guy that was trolling, and right away they kept going, I'm a BB even now. <laughs> so they the, yeah. the next trip, um, no, and then I did the report, I put it up on um, uh, 360. Yeah. Okay. Nobody believes it. Always. Everyone's like, you're laughing. It's never going to happen again. So I told Sammy, let's do it, both of us. We go again. We went, we killed seven out of nine. Exactly. The third trip that we tried to book with them, the whole entire marina was all fully booked. The whole fleet was full. All the guys from here started going at that time. But this is, you know, the town I used to, this is when the shop was in Brooklyn. And this is, I'm talking 10 years ago. We used to walk the whole, we, we were more energetic. We used to walk <laughs> there. Wake up in the morning, be at the shop. The house was, you know, the apartment was next to the shop. Walk till five o'clock, drive the night. Uh, get there to the yeah. dock, sleep half an hour in the car, jump into the boat, sleep two hours in the fishing ground, yeah. fish come back, go to work the second day, and then, oh, there's another window, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've done this like crazy at that time, and it was great. It was pit fishery, the fish were in that huge at that time, 65 inch, 70 inch yeah, fish yeah. at that time. It was like, oh, the occasional, like, 75, 77 was wow. Now all of a sudden, it's like all 110, <laughs> 90, 100, 100 inch fish. Um, our local fishery here is great for what we have, really. I mean, like, the, the rods, the reels, easier to handle. North Carolina, it's, I will find it's a, a lot more challenging. Over here, it's really what we're targeting. These rods are really built for what, what we have here. Like, the 200, the yeah, wide show. Yeah. I mean, not just even the, uh, some of the other rods, um, the pen reel, some of my favorite, or the cheer on all these, a lot. Even some some guys. Uh, who was I fishing with the last time? We had a, a black hole. I do like the black hole cheer rod. Yeah, I do. But yeah, not so much of the casting that was that. Yes. Yeah, but the jig rod is impressive. Not bad at all. Shimano. Um, I know a lot of the guys they use the Teres. Um, I wouldn't say it's not a good rod, but it's really not meant for what we have here. Put this one. Yeah, because uh, I find Shimano rods, they, they, they have a lot of uh, the high carbon content in the rods, and these are really mass produced, so there's really no quality check in them. You never really know. You, you don't know what rod you're going to get. You know, I've seen Teres, the same <coughs> exact Teres, catching the same class of fish, one brought the fish, and the other one in less than three minutes. It broke into like four pieces. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have, have seen, seen it happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the angle of how you fight the fish plays a very big part. You know, you really want your line always to be at a 45 degree angle. If it's going down, straight down and under, the amount of stress put on the rod I want you to wear it to put the belts and show them the point to the yeah. fight out there. That's, the yeah. That's Andy's idea as well. Yeah. 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 Okay, just hold it. Just put it like this. It doesn't mean to. I just want you to know something, guys. Watch, watch the spread of the legs. And they're using the guy. Okay, if you if you're in a position like this, you can use that. You know, and that's when the, that's when that's when the captain played the role as well. We're keeping you in that. It's his job. So you gotta talk. What do you want? This and the back. Lean back. Always lean back. That's why. You know now. That's it. Now the fish pulling even more. Yeah. Hold. You know, fish away to the left. North Carolina, North Carolina, they play a lot. I mean, you got to Get away from the throttle. You got to move. Yeah, you, have you don't want to be into the gunnel, right? Correct. Yeah. If now, let's say the fish pull to the pull, and now you do this, you are screwed. Trust me. As long as you if, if this happen, if this if this scenario yeah. happen right away, pull up, pull the rod out, point it down. Yeah. And, and and wait for it, wait for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, hold it, 
Let him back up the boat for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and then what's going to happen? Even though under pressure, let him back up the boat for you, and your line is going to be straight, and then you go back to that position. Okay, it's not it's not going to hurt. Just get it out. Yeah. You're resting your back. You don't want to. No matter what, you don't want to be like this. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're back, that's that's the worst. You don't want to be like this. front. As long as you're leaving in front, you're going to suffer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And remember, in that position, this is the, like we said, we talked about this before. This is the crucial moment of the whole fight. The fi you're fighting the fish, she's going to come, and most of you know that. She's going to come, she's going to see the boat. What's going to happen? She's going to run again, and when it runs again, do not high stick and fight it. Let it go. You know, let it go. And this is, as well, if it's running under the boat, you know, back up the boat, you know, the guy have to do something. Whoever sitting behind the hand got to do something about it. One thing I want um, I want to tell you guys is uh, most of the time when you're in the boat, yeah, you're usually fighting on the same side. Right? The left or the right side, you know. And you see the fish come under the boat. <laughs> we got that on video, right? <laughs> right? I didn't do the fish just the bad circle wasn't me. It's coming in under the boat. Right. right. You can actually get the rod out from your arm or from your belt, stick it into the water, and as soon as it comes out, you will have that small little window of slap right. back. I got you. And as soon as it comes out, always when they are on the outside, mm -hmm. gain as much line as you can. Clock, clockwise. Oh, yeah. Clockwise comes out, tuck, tuck, tuck. Then hold it. It's going to come in again, again. Put it back. Just hold, yeah. Hold, 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 hold. Even, if, even if it's gapable at that point, it's yeah. still for you. Yeah, right. yeah. This is the this is this is what everybody makes mistakes. Yes. You think it's ready for gapping? It's not. It's never ready until the captain says it's ready, or you feel like it's ready. After the, the second round, no, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. most of the time, you, you know. I mean, everyone here has caught yeah. caught to them, and you thought it's ready. Boom, okay. they go down. Right. And then another five minutes of fire. Yeah. And in the meantime, if you're not Correct. fast so properly. The thing is, always remember, when it comes in, just hang on. Just hang. There's no way you can gain any of But when they go out, that's the time where you start. You get your one. Yeah. Always on the outside. Go, go, go. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Gain line, gain line, gain line. Hold, hold, hold. So this way, it's, it's a whole system. You can't. You fight the fish. And you do the death circle. Usually that's the part that kills you, the death circle. You gotta preserve that energy yeah. toward the end. As if, you wanna, if you want to have one guy fighting it, sorry. As soon as the fish comes up on the surface, and usually they do that, yeah. tail slapping or whatever. I mean, everybody must have seen them. Once that happens, try never to let it go back down again. Because if you can do that, you will definitely bring in the fish in like what? Like how Sammy does it. Right, 15 minutes, 6 minutes. But a lot of time it's because uh, captain and the mate. It's a team game. Yes. It's That's never a solo. Nobody can tell I caught the fish. Uh, Nonsense. Uh, uh, yeah. It's always the captain, the angler, and the mate. It's a teamwork. It's a teamwork. teamwork. That's what it, it takes. It takes. It takes a couple of guys to tangle with it. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's no way you can do it on your own. Right. You need a good captain. You need a you know, good mate, somebody to gap it properly, and you need to do your job.